Yo, 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 S bus. So guys, today I'm going to introduce you to the different aspects of S-Bus and the different things you can use in your airplane while using S-Bus. Um, so here I have our terminal boxes. So we have a six port terminal box here. It's got four ports here and one in each side. And it's actually, you're able to screw this down. It's got nice ports for you to be able to screw down with. Um, we also have a four port S-Bus hub. It's got four ports just here on the top. It's pretty much the same thing as the six port. It just doesn't have the, S, the, the ports on each side for you to plug in servos with. Um, one thing to remember with these, um, they all come with a small um, connector to be able to go from, from here to your S-Bus port in your receiver. Um, one thing to remember is six port is actually five because you're gonna need one of these connections to run from here to your S-Bus connection. And the four port is actually, again, three because you're gonna be able to, you're gonna need to run the um, cable from here into your S-Bus port in the receiver. Um, I use these in basically all of my airplanes, uh, primarily the six port one. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys how I do it in my monoplane here and also in my biplane, um, how I use these to actually um, make sure I have all my connections ran to the right place and everything's routed nice and neat. Next, let's talk about hubs. Um, so I'm gonna use a small one just for video purposes of this one. Um, so this is just a standard, I believe this is a 50 millimeter S-Bus hub. Um, they come in various sizes. I'll link the sizes here for you guys to be able to see. Um, but what they are is they're three port hubs. As you can see, um, there's three ports for you to be able to plug servos into. Specifically in F3A for us that are running um, our rudder servos in our tail, these are a genius. Um, I typically, for running to my tail, I use a thousand millimeter S-Bus hub. Um, and I plug all three servos into it. And then typically what I do, and this is just an old school trick that my dad taught me, is I either put heat shrink over the connection so that all three are nice and secure in there, or you can use dental floss and wrap it around the wire here and then wrap it up and through so that all the, the connections stay in there. Um, these are great for using in an, any spot in your airplane um, if you have multiple connections that need to come to a central point. Um, so like in my um, biplane, I actually use a, um, a dual version of this, which is just a dual extension. Um, and I actually plug the aileron servos into each one and I have one in the top and one in the bottom. So that when you plug them in, it's just make things simple and everything's nice and clean for you. So just one quick note when you're using your S-Bus hubs here, uh, specifically a thousand millimeter one, and I'll show you guys a little bit later, you'll be able to see it. Um, but I use a ferrite core. Um, Fataba has recommended this for F3A. Um, so what we do is we take the ferrite core and you're gonna drop your wire in there, um, just like that. And these ferrite cores are easy. They just clamp down on there. And you wanna get this ferrite core as close to the receiver as possible. Um, so this one would need to be, you know, somewhere in here so that when it plugs into the receiver or if it plugs into your, if you're using these hubs to plug into a terminal um, box, you're gonna wanna use one of these as close to the terminal box as possible. Or what I've also tried doing is the connection that's running from the terminal box into the receiver, just clamping it on there and putting it as close to the receiver as possible. Seems to help, seems to work. Um, and like I said, again, Fataba does recommend that um, when you're using these hubs. One more thing I wanna talk about with S-Bus. Um, with all the EMF that we have coming off of speed controllers and various other things that are in our airplanes, um, Chad found this out as well, but you do wanna use a ferrite core off of your speed controller. Um, I bought this one from McMaster Car. Um, I'll link the size here so you guys can see what size it actually is. Um, but what we typically do is take your extension off of your speed controller that you're running to your receiver and you wanna wrap that extension in here about three to four times. Um, three seems to work, four seems to be the best. Um, and you wanna mount this as close to your receiver as possible. 
So what I do in my airplanes is they're actually ran, the extensions actually ran through here and then out to the receiver. And I leave maybe maybe an inch, inch and a half of wire that goes, plugs into the receiver. Um, and then I just hot glue this to the side of the fuselage. So it just butts up against it there and then it works, seems to work perfect. And so this is just to added, just a little added protection for you guys there um, when using um, any of the receivers that, or the speed controllers that actually do have EMF feedback. Um, I know that it's not, it's not a huge deal for most people, but for some people in high noise environments, this could definitely help you out. So this is my Encourage biplane. Um, let's talk through what I have set up S-Bus wise on it. So with this one originally, it had two servos going to the tail. So we had a, a dual extension ran to the tail currently, or at the time we did when we were just running the two servos. Now that we've put the rudder servo in the tail, we needed a three port extension back there to be able to go through to the S bus. So what we did um, is typically we use a thousand millimeter S bus cable. Um, I'll include a picture here so you can see what it looks like. Um, but what we did was we took and desoldered the wire off of it and actually soldered power box wire onto it just to save a little bit of weight. It's not a huge deal. Um, and the only reason we really did it is because when I originally set this airplane up, it had the dual extension, like I said, and this is a, this length from here to the tail is a little more than a thousand millimeters. Um, so it was a, a thousand millimeter one wasn't going to reach without me rearranging everything, which I didn't want to do. So um, we have a 7008 receiver here. Um, this ferrite ring is actually ran into an extension that goes into the speed controller. We started doing those on the D3 just to reduce some of the EMF um, that was backfeeding to the receiver from the speed controller. Um, it seems to, to work perfectly fine. Um, I know Chad posted a lot about this. Um, this is something that I just started doing just for precautions for myself. Um, we also have a six port hub here. The six port hub has um, four slots on the top here and then one on each side, top and bottom um, positioned this way. Um, so we have a dual extension here um, that's plugged into the bottom of the port and then also have one that's plugged into the top port as well. This one goes to the bottom wing so I can just plug both aileron servos in here with it being S bus, it doesn't matter which one I plug them into um, and it's going to always feed off of the correct channel. Um, and then also, like I said, I have one at the top here. That's for the top wing. And then um, I'm just running straight two cell voltage into the receiver. Um, so this is just an extension I made up with a micro beams on the end of it. So the receiver battery plugs into there. Um, and that's pretty much the simple way of doing um, ESPA setup for a biplane. Um, I'll show you guys the wings as well, how we do them. But they're just um, servos ran out through just regular power box extensions. And then, like I said, they plug into each channel. But I do want to show you something that we do do on the ailerons, and that'll be, I'll put that up here in a second. Hey guys, so pretty quickly, I wanted to show you guys why I use these um, dual extensions for the elevator and why it makes things easier. Um, so, this is the bottom wing. Um, so, we're able just to plug these right in. Doesn't matter which port I plug them into. Actually, that one's in backwards. But it doesn't matter which port you plug them into, it just makes life so much simpler with the aileron servos already on S bus. It makes it so much easier when you can just plug it in knowing that it's already gonna go to the right channel. And it makes life so much easier. You just slide your wings on and you're good to go. All right, so let's talk about how I do my S-Bus setup on my uh, monoplane. So this is my uh, Mark Hunt Design Rebo. Um, and this is the same with any of the, the monoplanes that I've built, whether it be the Element or my Aerial or anything like that. Um, so I'm using a 7108 um, receiver here. Um, with the newer antennas. I'm also using just, like I said before, 2S LiPo directly into the receiver um, with a micro deans on the end for my receiver battery. I'm using the six port terminal box here um, and then the thousand millimeter S bus cable um, hub to the tail. Um, there's three servos in this one in the tail, so there's a rudder and the two elevators. Um, so this is perfect because they plug directly into the here and then I can just run them to the terminal box and then I run the S bus wire out of the terminal box into the S bus port on the receiver. Now, with this terminal box, if you remember in the biplane, it was mounted vertical. This one we have mounted horizontal. And the reason I do this is because with the aileron servos, when they come in from the wing, I can plug them directly into each side of the S bus terminal box. And this makes life just easier. Um, it, it, it ends up being a lot cleaner in my opinion. Um, and so that just seems to work out best for me. Um, I also, like I did in the other airplane, this airplane actually has a D3 in it. My Encourage has a Fataba ESC in it currently, but I also have the ferrite ring here. 
um, that's ran to the extension to the S to the D3 speed controller as well. Um, so that's the typical setup that I do for a monoplane. Um, it's nothing special, nothing too fancy, but it seems to it's worked well for me and works out best.